Greetings. My name is Maurice Simhoff with the Jackson County, Michigan Historical Society, joined by Lieutenant Barkley with the Michigan State Police. In this video, we will highlight the history of the Michigan State Police Post in Jackson County. Hello, my name is Jay Barkley. I'm the Assistant Post Commander here at the Michigan State Police Jackson Post. The Michigan State Police have been here in Jackson County for over 103 years. In this video, we'll highlight that history. The Michigan State Police has a long and rich history in Jackson County, stretching back 103 years. State troopers at the Jackson Post have tackled illegal drug rings, enforced motor vehicle laws, and responded to some of Michigan's most infamous crimes, just to name a few roles, since 1921. The presence of the state's largest walled prison also has figured prominently in their history, with troopers working to quell riots and catch escapees. But the driving force behind the establishment of the Michigan State Police and the Jackson Post was not the prison or the need to suppress crime. It was the need to provide security during the First World War. The United States declared war on the German Empire on April 6, 1917, nearly three years after the war started. This prompted several security concerns that were heightened when the National Guard was mobilized for federal services overseas. Who would replace the National Guard? And how could the state expect to safeguard its vast war production network? To answer that question, Michigan leaders turned to Colonel Ray C. Vandercook, a decorated veteran and former adjutant general of Michigan's National Guard. Colonel Vandercook's solution was to organize a replacement force that he called the Michigan State Troops Permanent Force. This force, established on April 19, 1917, was composed of two mounted troops and two dismounted motor companies totaling almost 300 men. Although this early force was based in East Lansing, it was dispatched throughout Michigan to protect the state's vital services and resources from possible war-related sabotage or disruption by radical groups. Areas targeted for protection included mines in the Upper Peninsula, the Sioux Locks, power plants, munitions plants, warehouses, and railroad centers. Troopers also quelled outbreaks of unrest and later enforced the state's wartime liquor prohibition laws. The Michigan Central Railroad Depot in Jackson was one of the locations guarded by the state police during World War I. To maintain a constant presence at this vital transportation service, an infantry detachment was dispatched to a small building near the tracks in 1918. This small detachment, which was the predecessor of the Jackson Post, was likely disbanded when World War I ended in 1919. The war's end also led to controversy about the entire force. Was it still needed in peacetime? The Michigan legislature took stock of ongoing post-war crimes, traffic problems, and labor unrest, and decided that such a force was, indeed, still needed. So in 1919, the legislature established a permanent force and gave it the title still used today, the Michigan State Police. Since the state police are organized in groups called troops, individuals were called troopers. After its official establishment, the state police were given additional responsibilities that included patrolling rural areas, assisting county sheriffs and village constables, and enforcing traffic laws on major highways. Under the direction of Captain Ira H. Marmon, the state police also formed a detective bureau dedicated to solving crimes with the most technologically advanced equipment in the nation. By 1921, Jackson had become a key area of responsibility for the Michigan State Police because of prison disturbances there. In light of that, Colonel Vandercook, who now served as a state commissioner, decided it was time to establish an official post in Jackson. He selected a small rectangular building with two rooms to serve as state police offices, likely near the prison. Troopers boarded in nearby private rooms. This milestone marks the founding of Jackson's first permanent state police post. One of the more dramatic episodes involving the state police in the early 1920s involved the investigation of a gruesome murder and the protection of the murder suspect. At one point, hysteria was so great that a mob gathered outside the Jackson County Jail in 1922 to lynch the suspect who was held there. To dispel the crowd, the state police used tear gas for the first time in a non-war setting successfully dispersing agitators. The proximity of the state's largest prison kept the Jackson detachment very busy during the early 1920s, requiring ever-increasing dispatchments of troopers to Jackson. Their duties included transferring inmates between prisons, apprehending escapees, and guarding camps for convict laborers building highways. 
In 1924, horse patrols were discontinued, and troopers used Harley-Davidson or Indian motorcycles with sidecars, as well as confiscated automobiles for patrol purposes. Their territory included Jackson, Branch, Hillsdale, Washtenaw, Calhoun, and Lenaway counties. By 1930, the original small office in Jackson was insufficient to serve the growing numbers of troopers dispatched there. So Commissioner Oscar G. Olander authorized the construction of a building large enough to accommodate 15 to 20 men, in addition to the normal post and district staff of seven men. The building on 3400 Cooper Street also contained a mess hall, one of only four used by troopers in the state. The transportation and communication used by the state police also changed drastically in 1930. The Jackson Post received some of the department's first marked patrol cars, Ford Model A's, and a large sedan confiscated from bootleggers. All vehicles were equipped with armor-plated radiator shields, bulletproof windshields, rifles, and tear gas guns. And thanks to Spartan Radio Company of Jackson, the cars also were equipped with the first-ever radio receivers, enabling troopers to receive messages from the department's new one-way radio station. Several major cases catapulted the Jackson Post into the national spotlight in 1936 but none more than their discovery of the bulletproof getaway car used by the infamous Purple Gang, a criminal mob of bootleggers and hijackers. Not only did troopers and detectives seize the gang's armored car in a barn near Albion, they also seized numerous weapons and apprehended several members of the gang itself. World War II brought additional security responsibilities for the state police. Special detectives assigned at Jackson worked with the FBI and military intelligence from 1941 to 1945 to investigate claims of espionage and establish security zones around vital war production facilities among duties. In 1952, when the worst prison riot in the state's history occurred at Jackson, routine patrols were suspended and platoons of heavily armed troopers from around the state joined Jackson's contingent in successfully restoring order. In 1989, Jackson's almost 60-year-old post had become the oldest building of its kind still in use in the state, so it was replaced with an updated one-story brick building on 3401 Cooper Street, just a short distance from its predecessor. From its humble beginnings as a mounted home guard in the early 1900s to 2024, the Michigan State Police and the Jackson Post have grown into a full-service law enforcement organization with a proud tradition of steadfast service. As of 2024, the 30 to 40 member staff at the Jackson Post, known as Post Number 13, includes detectives, uniform sergeants, troopers, and motor carrier officers, to name a few roles. Although state troopers have been commonly associated with highway patrol, their duties today extend far beyond the pavement. A brief sampling of services that the Jackson Post provides to Jackson and Hillsdale counties in 2024 include cybersecurity, missing persons investigations, identity theft investigations, and various forms of assistance at the Southern Michigan prison. For over 100 years, the Michigan State Police and the Jackson Post have served Jackson and the state, bridging the gap between local police work and nationwide law enforcement strategies. Not only is this long-standing tradition worth commemorating, but it serves as ongoing inspiration as the department strives to continue providing the highest quality law enforcement and public safety services possible throughout Michigan.